You get my point? Here is the point. It is, it, this thing is killing our image. That unbelievers know what is happening. We, we close our eyes pretending that we don't know what's happening. Number one, I'm not a Kenyan. Excuse me, sir. I, I, I am not a Kenyan. Excuse you will not respond Sorry, sir. I, I, am, I am coming. I am not a Kenyan. They have not wait, crossed wait, their eyes. Wait, That's wait, what they say. I am not a Kenyan. I don't know what's happening in politics in Kenya. I, I don't, sorry, please. I don't read papers. I, you can see I read you can only the Bible. Bible. So, 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 so uh, listen, listen. For them to say, I am coming. No, 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 no. Can we listen to him? It seems they are attacking me. It seems they are attacking me. Let me finish. Can he finish? Excuse me. Bishop, Bishop, can he finish? You see, can he finish? 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 Can he it's okay. I'm also doubting you because there are it's things okay. you have said that does not agree with the Bible. It's okay. I, I'm also doubting your faith. Why will you attack me that you're you doubting are my faith? In you are also areas. heretical. I hate what you said. No, let me tell you. No, 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 no. Excuse me, sir. Areas. You are also I heretical in some areas. Now, now, I, I hate what truth. you said. He's, he's, he's a hate Christian. He's a hate no, Christian. No, no, listen. Can, they don't allow me to finish what I want to but explain. He's a hate Christian. You get my point? I... You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I wanted to listen to this uh, very hot debate. You see... I don't normally use um, raw wordings in order to describe people or their actions. But I think that the, act, uh, the attitude of this man here was like that of scavengers, like that of uh, vultures that actually want to harvest the, um, the carcass of, um, of their meal. Uh, let me just put it that way. You know, they are like lions. They are like wild cats. That have surrounded a pre, but I think I appreciate the boldness and the tenacity in the person of Apostle Richard Takim. Uh, this is how you know a child of God. Even when you see hatred, you see anger, you see you see some some form of you know uncommunicated um, biasness in their you know in the people's disposition and their action. In their heart, it was like. We are, we are the aborigines. We are the owners of the land. How dare you small foreigner, you, you Nigerian, come here to tell us what to do. But it is the truth. The word of God is universal and it cannot be uh, otherwise. I just want you to hear this argument and see the difference. You see, uh, even though they try to bully him, they try to insult him, they try to make... Uh, he could have resorted to name calling, but he did not. He did not resort to name calling, and that is how you know a child of God. Many people think that to defend the truth, you have to be vulgar. To defend the truth, you have to be, you know, you have to lose your mannerisms, your manners. You have to be, um, you know, aggressive in order to appear as a defender of the truth. And Jesus said, be wise as serpents, but as harmless as doves. Uh, meanwhile, this is the part one of this uh, video. The part two will be coming. I would have allowed it the way it was, but I think it will be too long for some persons to want to click on the link. So, part two is coming soon. God bless you. Let me not bore you with so much. Enjoy the video. God bless you. All right. Welcome, gentlemen. We are two or more are gathered. We are in the presence of the Lord, right? You're right, Ken. <laughs> okay. In the, name, in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Where we're gathered in the name of the Lord. Yes. Let's begin this by asking specific questions. You're leaders in several churches. And I'll begin with you. Yeah. If these politicians came to you, church, take a stand. Will you accept or not? Ken, it's interesting that we are discussing a topic that is uh, touchy, that is sensitive, because a number of politicians are members of our churches. Let's begin from there. They're members of our congregations. And if they're members of our congregations, we don't draw a line and say, those are politicians and these ones are not politicians. And therefore, when it comes to giving and they walk down to the altar, bringing the offering, 
you segregate or you profile and say, for politicians, you must tell us where, where you've you gotten got this money, money from. Mm -hmm. And for the rest, come and bring in other words, the tithe and in the other offering. Words, you're going to take it. Politicians yes. are members of our congregations. Let's begin from there. And from the church perspective and from the biblical perspective, we do not draw a line. When they come to church, they come to worship and they're members of our congregations. Great. Let me go to you. Yeah. Um, Presbyterian, <coughs> but would you accept? Ken, uh, it's not a matter of accepting or rejecting because everybody who comes to the church is not branded by his profession or his daily work. They come as worshippers and whoever comes into the place of worship and uh, call it the church, they come there to worship just like any other worshipper. And therefore, whatever they bring as a sacrifice, as an offering, is part of the offering that is brought by anybody else because these are also members in our churches. Okay, okay. Apostle, yeah. same question. <laughs> Actually, um, to, to, to start with, if the, if the church was not sick, I don't think we'll be talking about this. Honestly, if the church, was, if the not church sick. was not sick, because okay. the church is sick, the church is sick, the body of Christ is sick. And I thank God for what uh, uh, the bishop said, that these politicians are church members. And these same politicians have been tagged as corrupt. They have been tagged as corrupt and they are our church members. In that means, we have failed as preachers. We have failed. Okay. The, we have failed in changing them. You get my point? To me, I believe that when a politician comes to me, my first, I will pray the principle that God operated when Israel came out of Egypt. When Israel came out of Egypt, God never asked them for money. They came out of Egypt passed through the Red Sea, we simplify water baptism. Got to Sinai, which is Holy Ghost baptism. Before he requested for money, which they used to build the ark. So that means when a politician come to me, I should first of all check out his salvation. Are you saved? Many just profess Christianity, but by character they are not. Titus chapter 1 verse 16. So with our mouth we profess that we know God, but by our act we deny him. So, so me, I will first of all focus myself on your salvation, the procedure, are you saved? It's not about money. It's about your soul. Like, I remember one day I said to one of those media, I said, many politicians will be cursing their pastors in hell for not showing them the right way. And I said, if any politician dies and come back to life, they will resign from politics and become evangelists, going about preaching the gospel. Because we don't know that this life is so short and there's eternity after time. You get my point? So if we are we preachers, we are just let our members know the real focus. It's about making heaven, not making money. Okay. Okay. You get my point? So me, I will focus on your salvation. Before that. Before but actually I, I, I've rejected I'm wondering, money. Apostle, I've rejected before we talk about your rejection. Yeah. I'm wondering how many people in your congregation you will be vetting to know where they're getting the source of money and their salvation before you accept. But let me let me listen to Bishop. Bishop. Well, thank you for having me tonight. Uh, when I was doing my theology, one of the things I was taught is that the church is a hospital. The church is not a refrigerator where you just keep the fresh things and uh, the nice, the cool things, but the church is a hospital. The church belongs to people who need help. And uh, <laughs> there is the process we call the process of sanctification in scripture. That somebody comes to church with their rasters and with everything and just the way they are. But as they continue, God works in them. We are all projects at work. And I don't even understand why people single out politicians. Politic to be a politician is a calling. It's a profession. Why don't we single out prostitutes? Why don't we single out the lawyers who are liars? Why don't we single out the engineers who are just fake why don't we single out all the other professions which have got rotten potatoes? And so for me, uh, as my introductory remark tonight, is to say that the church is a hospital where the sick go. You cannot find a church that is just full of saint, sanctimonious, holy people. And if you find it, if you join it, you're going to desecrate it. 
The thing he's mentioning about that when God delivered the children of Israel from uh, the, the land of bondage and he didn't ask for money, well, he, I think he should read the Bible more. Absolutely. Because the Bible says they came out with gold so Wait. that they can go and offer unto God. Sorry for cutting you, sir. So, they uh, came out let me with finish. the money. Let me he, finish. Did, he didn't let request me finish. for meat. He didn't let me ask them for meat. Let me finish. Money. Until okay. after Sinai. Let me finish. Yes, they, they, they came out from Egypt with, with gold. Money. Yes. God says, he never and requested. one of the reasons why Pharaoh was going after them was mm -hmm. not even because of them, it's because of what they had carried out of Egypt. They're coming out. Okay. Right. <laughs> So you are very clear. No, he came out with great substance. Yes, and see, see, we need to find out what me. is that, that substance. substance. They came out with substance. Yes. But God never requested for the substance to be given to him the way we pastors do today until the cross sign up. Go and read the Bible, Exodus, I, 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 Exodus 25. I, I, Wait, excuse me. Yeah. Let's also explain what is church. Because, you see, we call crowd church. He said the church is not a hospital. Sorry, the church is a hospital. I want to submit that the church is not a hospital. The church is a pillar and ground of truth. First Timothy chapter 4, from verse 14 down to 16, is a pillar and ground of truth. If you go to a place where this person is still a sinner, this one is an adulterer, this is a liar, that is a crowd. Look at, in the, if, if you look at the book of Acts, there is, a, there is crowd, there is church, there is the kingdom. What Philip had in Exodus 13, sorry, in Exodus, uh, sorry, in Acts chapter 8, in, in Samaria was a crowd. When Peter came and got them baptized in the Holy Ghost, church began. Galatians made it clear that if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not part of, part of Christ. You get my point? Mm -hmm. So if you say the church is a hospital, that is wrong. The, church, the true church, if you say the crowd is a hospital, it's true. Crowd is hospital. But church is the ground and pillar of truth. I, I think we, we should interject and say yeah, we should which that, is okay. uh, yeah. that uh, he's entitled to his opinion. Right. But uh, the truth of the matter is, when you want to define the church, you can define it in many ways, but three are distinct. One is that the church is the pillar of truth that he says. The church is also a crowd of people that come together. And the church is also an institution. So right. there is no way you right. can only single out one mm -hmm. and say this is what the church is. Okay. The I'm church. To um, <laughs> to what the Bible says. Yes, we are also yes. part of the scriptures, and uh, uh, even when we are talking without quoting the scripture, it doesn't mean we don't know the scripture. Right. We are only saying that uh, you cannot single out one way and say that is the only way you can define the church. Okay. And so when we are defining the church, we are talking about an institution which has governance structures and the way it does its own things. We are also talking about a group of people that come with a particular faith to worship their God. And we are also talking about a place where the, the truth should stand okay. and should be seen to be standing. Bishop I, I think without losing focus yes. on uh, the subject and uh, the discussion that we are having, having explained what the church is, and if I got Bishop Murethi, it was very clear that the church is a place or a fellowship where yes. our members come to be ministered to. The Bible is very clear. That's why it's a hospital. It's yes. called a spiritual actual hospital, depending on, on the terminology that he's using it. And you see what we are getting into is a theological discourse. Yes. But I think our being here tonight is to answer the question, is it money? Of the church, of the church, so the Bible. I think we better get back there yeah. because there are so many viewers who are actually watching, they are listening, and they want to find out mm -hmm. this which has been trending in the social media and through the media platforms. Yes, and therefore, what I would say is this: when you we talk about money and and the Bible, I, I think we need to be very clear: you cannot separate, you cannot separate money from the Bible because the Bible is very clear. The question should have been. Is it scriptural or biblical to give? Okay. I think that's what we should be dealing with. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll get into that, but let me hear from I, I think I think Bishop. I need to also add on to what uh, uh, Pastor Kefe is saying, or Bishop Kefe is saying. Uh, my brother here, uh, I think, uh, needs to understand uh, proper theology. Yes, mm -hmm. And proper theology advocates for when people are called out, the ecclesia of Jesus Christ. Ecclesia yeah. is the Greek of the called out ones. We don't advocate, and Jesus never even advocated for sinless perfectionism. 
See, he's advocating for seamless perfectionism. No one in church is actually perfect. Mm -hmm. No one in church is without sin. The Bible says he that is without sin, actually, should be the first one even to cast out the stone. Yes. He says, we know that we have sins, and if we confess our sins, he's talking to the church. He is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is First John chapter 1 and verse 9. Advocating for sinless perfectionism is great hypocrisy. Absolutely. Let me respond to that. Yes. When you begin to hear a preacher talk of he cannot <laughs> receive me, money, mm -hmm. I think we are not saying the truth. Uh, they're not we honest with themselves. No, we are no, not yeah, honest, honest. Not okay. honest okay. there. Let we need to get back to, that, to the please. scriptures. Okay. Let me add my okay. voice to what okay. you say okay. because we need to correct. It's an error that we need to correct. I cannot imagine a minister of the gospel, a pastor, having a congregation you are conducting a service and you finish that service without giving the people the opportunity to give to the Lord, which is scriptural, because giving is the highest form of worship. Check the word of God. The Bible is so clear about the place of giving in scripture. Okay. And what we are saying for the purpose of those who are watching and who have joined us in this program, there should be a demarcation between who and how okay who and how no, yes now let me let, let me let me respond to but let, let me begin with the one of giving i never said they should not give you get my point if you if you if you get the question the subject we are dealing with how does politician give offering do you think they come to match the way whatever politician match the way people give offering in church it just they drop some money but they meet us behind the scene and drop hefty checks now you are you know how much let's say a member of parliament is earning in a month. He now bring a check of a hundred million to you to contribute to your church building. You know that maybe he's ending only, only 500,000 shillings. He now bring a check of a hundred million. And before he enter into politics, he was riding a very little car. Within two months, he has bought three jeeps. He now brought a check of a hundred million. And you cannot ask him as a pastor, what are you doing? That is what I mean. I'm okay. not referring to the standing on the altar, I mean, the normal offering that you the drop in the track. basket. Yes. That, that one, you cannot ask anybody, what, what, what are you giving? But politicians do not give offering the way ordinary members do. I, I they they meet us behind the scene and drop checks. They meet behind yes, the scene and drop checks. Yes, you now ask questions. Okay. That is it. Now, to the one of perfectionism, mm -hmm. I'm not advocating for that. Let me tell you something. We, we must understand, he said, ecclesia. That's a Greek word. Call at once. That is church. Called out from where? Called out from sin. That is it. You are not supposed to keep living in sin after you have met Jesus. Listen to me. There is, there is, there is living in sin. There is sin living in you. Now, sin is living in us, but not everybody is living in sin. You get my point? We you are, are born of sin. That, that's what I'm saying. Sin is living in everyone, but not everyone is living in sin. Yeah, because most of us have received the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. not to live in sin. Okay. Though sin is in us. But we don't live in it because the Holy Ghost has, been, has empowered us not to live in it. That is why when the, the woman that was caught in adultery, what did Jesus tell her? Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He didn't say go and continue sinning. You see the kind of grace gospel that has been preached today is destroying the life of people. I, I, think I, I know people that meet Ken, us for counseling and Ken. I know what they go through. Okay. Ken, let me, let me put something straight here. I don't think it is right for us to, as Kefa says, that we sit here and waste all the time trying to uh, justify our theology and our school of thought on, on what is obvious. I think it is right for us to go straight to the points that brought us here so that we tell our country and our listeners and our, our viewers, our, 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 our members, what is the right position of the church? But we can't say that without listening to all of you. Yeah, That's because why we have because, to listen to him. All. Because while we are listening to him, yes. while we are listening to him, we should also put things straight. Are we going to sit here and say that uh, sin is living in every body, uh, but politicians are living in sin? Is Reverend, that, is that Reverend, what we let, can let me, say? let me just put this in perspective. Yes. What he's asking. Yes, he's put. Out an example, yeah. a classic example of someone who lives within your community because yes. churches belong to the community. Yes. Ken today is just a reporter at Nation, yeah. right? Yeah. Drives a small car, lives in a rented house. Yeah. I come look for a position and I'm the member of parliament. Yeah. Four months later, yeah. I'm coming back to church and yeah. I even asked for the church for fundraiser. I even came and you prayed for me. 
Mm -hmm. And then I asked for fundraiser for among my friends. And you know it. Yeah. Four months later after the election and have been sworn in, I come back, I'm driving a big car. And I'm donating 10 million shillings. Is it not right for you to ask questions? Where did we, Ken we get can, the money? We, we can Suddenly, ask, we can ask these questions without condemning. Because it is true that there are some people who are hardworking. There are some politicians who are hardworking. There are others who uh, maybe they had hefty borrowing before they, they got into those positions. But we cannot say that uh, all politicians are corrupt. We can also not say that all politicians who come and offer in the church are corrupt. Okay. And we can also not say mm -hmm. that uh, we can bar politicians from coming to our churches. Because, for example, I'm from PCA Church. No, we're not asking you to bar them. What yes. we're saying is yes. stop accepting these huge donations from them. Uh, unless you verify that this one is uh, from a corrupt you can, how, you can, can, how do you verify? Let me give you an example. How do you, how do you, you verify? verify? I've given you an example. Yes. I've given you an example. You see, an example. I think it's yes. very simplistic. Yes. Very simplistic for a preacher to say, this is a politician and their salary is 500,000. I mean, what makes you think they can't do business? Yeah. What makes you think they months? don't get... Exactly. You know, what makes you think they don't have donations? Well, not even three months, even one week. But consistency. Not even three months, even one week. But, but consistency. It's so simplistic. No, no, no. It's so simplistic. Well, listen, when you're talking, I was a bit quiet. Listen, it is so simplistic. So simplistic, so simplistic, so simplistic to think that because you're a politician, if you give more than your salary, then it must be corrupt money. Who made you the judge? What businesses do you know about this man? What other uh, source of incomes do you know about this man? Okay. You know, so the barometer of choosing, w w the preacher is not called there to be the barometer of where the man is coming from. Okay, what happens with the other members? Forget about the politicians. Mm. What happens with other prostitutes who come to your church? What happens with other prostitutes who come to your church? Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Okay, if we are talking about politicians, are we lumping all the politicians together? I think we better be very careful on the statements that we are using in this uh, discussion. Okay. okay. Are, are we all, all, all the all politicians, politicians black together? Because I'll tell you, okay. I know of politicians that went into parliament that are in politics that were doing business, very successful businessmen, and they were giving even before they went into politics. So do we lump them also together? We have lawyers, like Bishop Moretti said, we have lawyers that uh, also get money in whichever way. We have corporate leaders, etc. I think, let us talk about a thief who has been arrested. Who has been convicted. Who has been convicted. Even arrest is not enough. And then brings a bag yes. of money. Mm -hmm. There, we have to accept? teach them okay. on restitution. Okay. Because <laughs> if we do not actually clearly state what okay. we are talking about, you are going to lump all politicians as corrupt, all engineers as corrupt, even you can could be corrupt. Okay. Is that what we are saying? Yes. Yes. This is, we need to take a break, but I'll give, I'll give an opportunity. Yes. Okay. So yeah. we need to be very careful. Here's an example about. I'm giving, because if you, they are not getting my, the point. L you try explaining earlier. Look at example. There was, I, I know a pastor personally in Nigeria. He rejects money. Look at the way he does. There was a woman in his church. Her average tithe, because you know they keep tight records. An average, her average tithe was 10,000 a month. One day Naira. she, Naira, one day she brought 500,000 Naira. He called her and said, come, what did you do to get this kind of money? One in a million. The woman explained, because he has never, she had never such money before. I know the man personally. Okay. The, he, he explained, he said, sir, I sold my house. So, so amount. I sold it for five million. And this is my time. He said, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for this foundation. Okay. And that is what I'm talking about. We should check. The, you see, we were supposed to up, uphold balance of righteousness. Okay. That is part of our assignment as preachers. I'm coming back to talk about this, but we need to take a break. As we take a break, I want you to listen to uh, Sir Pete. Why is he against this? I'd like your responses on that when we come back. But as we take the break, let's listen to him. I urge all our bishops to shun partisan politics from the pulpit. Let us not allow Harambe monies to be a subtle way of sanitizing the corrupt leaders. Let us uh, learn as a church issues you've been talking about and gentlemen i like your response on the fact that uh someone at that level of sir pit doesn't favor what three of you obviously favors and looks at differently let me begin with your bishop i think what uh archbishop or sabbat is simply saying is that we need to be careful as ministers of the gospel 
whenever politicians come to us. And um, yes, we should not entertain anybody that comes to our church in the name of campaigning and using money as a bait. I think that's what he's saying. But he does not really actually come out to say that we should not educate, we should not teach our congregants about giving. Now, congregants here means there are those who are politicians in our congregations, there are those who are engineers in our congregations, we have lawyers, all kinds of professionals okay. in our congregations. We need to start out and teach the truth. And you know, Ken, what is, I'm concerned about is, are we talking about a thief who has been arrested, prosecuted, and comes with a bag of money to sanitize? Or we are talking of uh, politicians lumping them together, and they come with hefty bags of bundles of money, all right, in the name of, you know, enticing us so that we can either pray for them or we can campaign for them, does or public et cetera. Does so public perception be fit here? Clear. But does it fit public perception on a person? The, the, yeah, there is, percep there is perception when, somebody, when perception, somebody has Bishop? been profiled, yes. when somebody has been profiled mm -hmm. and, um, you know, stones and aspersions have been cast on him, you know, there will be that perception. But until somebody is proven guilty, we cannot pick a stone, honestly, and stone I, and, and that And when person. that happened before I go to, uh, him, uh, to Reverend, when that finally happens, what do you do with the money he's been donating to church? Now, that's, when I'm finally now that's when we come in with the word of God and help that person. Not refund? To, to, wait a minute. There is a place of restitution. Yes. There is a place of restitution. You see, I have congregants, our members in my church, who come to worship in our church. All of them are members of the community. They are members of that congregation. Okay. We don't profile them and say, politicians, you have your place to sit. Engineers, you have your place to sit. Uh, media guys, you have, you have your place to sit. Okay. And when they bring the offerings, I stand there to find out where they got the money from. That do doesn't that. happen. Okay. But mm -hmm. if I get to know a member of my congregation has been arrested, has been prosecuted, and the law has taken its you know, cause. It's my responsibility as a minister of the gospel to restore that person back to the faith. Okay. That's what the Bible says. Yes. 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 You know, the interesting thing about this uh, debate is, uh, and it's so sad, because even this debate did not start in the church. This debate started with politicians. It was politicians trying to fight other politicians to the point of trying to even fight their faith. It did not start in the church. And some preachers just jumped onto the bandwagon. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, not understanding that this was actually a very, very politicized subject of politicians trying to fight another politician. Mm -hmm. And the only thing they could do is to even attack his faith or her faith. Yeah. That's so unfortunate. I wish it started in the church. And the people who are crying out the loudest, you know, in the name of bishops and archbishops, were the ones who were pioneering this cause. But they jumped into a war they didn't understand. Okay. Let me ask a question here, and I need somebody to answer me. Who built the Church of England? Who built the Roman Catholic Church? I just need to know. Because if you go back to history, you'll find that the Anglican Church, as we know it, was built by kingdoms and kings and, bishop, and politicians. And bishop, let me, go bring, back to let me bring you back home. <laughs> let me bring you back to Kenya. Who built the established cathedrals that we have in this country? Where did the money come from? Okay. Uh, Excuse me. Yeah. So let me let me say something about aligning the Lord takes his cause before a pastor takes position. Now there are four levels of authority. I mean delegated to man. The highest is the family, the second is the church. The third is the government. Sorry, the highest yes, the, 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 the third is government. The government comes after the church. So now you, church, who is at the top of government, you allow government to teach you how to implement righteousness. As a leader, look at Peter, saints, Ananias, and Sephira were thieves without the government telling him. They entered the church, they were speaking. He just knew. That was after the cross. This gospel of grace stuff. That was after the cross. In the under the grace dispensation, Peter stood. Ananias, is it how much you got? He lied. Peter knew. Let's say they went to court to go and prove that case. Ananias would have won the case. But Peter, a, a man of God, because we are first, we should be men of God, not men of men. Peter was a man of God, and he sensed from the realm of the spirit that this guy's heart is not right. If we 
meet preachers operate in the same sensitivity. We don't need to wait for government to start coming and say uh, this one is convicted. A lot of politicians are very smart. Okay. You cannot even argue. You cannot even why, why, why do you, why convict do you think, them. So the point, sir. Why, why do you think they do this? Why do you think so, they receive sorry? this money? Why do you think the church continues to receive this money? You, you see, let me tell you the truth. Yes. Not every one of us that are preachers are children of God. Okay. Not every one of us. You see, the fact that you're a pastor does not make you a child of God. The word pastor, you can use it for the Maasai guy who has his his uh, sheep. He's also a, a pastorist. So, 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 so you, you are <laughs> first a, a child of God mm -hmm. by nature before you're a preacher. So if you're a so child you, of God you by nature, okay. you will enforce righteousness. Okay. You see, you, you see it, it, me, I'm talking about enforcing righteousness. Okay. And that's why there's no peace in the church. Look at the church today. Yes. If everybody's in need I of think, deliverance. I, I need to hear I from him. I need to explain yes. something. Can, can I hear from him? It's, it's burning. It's burning in my it's spirit. Burning. Uh -huh. It's burning in my spirit. Sorry, but the we're coming back. The work of a pastor uh -huh. and a preacher in a church is to teach the congregation. So. Saying that the government comes first mm -hmm. does not hold any water here. I, I, who, 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 I said the church you didn't comes get, first. You didn't get what I was saying, okay. and that's why you need to listen to us. We should not be listening to you alone. No, listen to us you, also. You see, sir, I got listen, what you listen to us I, I also so perfectly. that you can get the point. The truth is, what is the work of a pastor? Is to teach the can congregation. I, can I tell you the work of teach, a pastor? Uh, wait a no, minute. No, no, no. I have to, to teach the congregation. Yeah. yeah, you got your chance. Let me speak no, to you. I don't, you don't be too I don't theological, to be too theological to in the studio yeah. at the expense of the people who are watching a sensitive see, matter. You see, you Kenya, Kenya can, is, can I speak to you? Let me speak to you. Let me speak to you. Ken, even Nigeria, they are they are ninety percent Christians. No, we are not. So if you are not, then listen to us first. I'm saying this, Ken. I think it is wrong for us to come to this table to indoctrinate one another or even to begin to lecture people on theological issues. Back to your question. What do you think uh, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church meant? I think that's, that was your question. Yes. No, why is it that that's, that seems to be his drive? Don't accept. Let churches look for other sources of money. Don't accept money from politicians. Don't give them that platform. That's what I'm asking. I, I think he was right in one way that um, the church should have a systems of getting money for their projects and what have you. But he did not say that the church should not have a rambis and involve church members. He did not say that. He said that if for any reason that is my interpretation. Mm. That for any reason, you have uh, a reason to believe that whatever source of this money is this, then it should not be part of the church agenda. Okay. Exactly. But he is not saying that the church should not have a rambis. I, I would like to give you an example. I am from Kiambu County. The governor of Kiambu County is a member of the PCA. We have several other governors, about uh, five of them that are, uh, are from PCA church. Do you want to tell me that if we have a funds drive and they come into the church, I will send them away? I think we should separate between uh, allowing politicians to give money in the church and allowing politicians to give speeches in the church, some of which are abusing others. Okay. I'm going to talk about that, but I have a question that stemmed from Bishop, yes. uh, who built the Roman Catholic Church, for example, who built the Anglican. These are traditional churches. We know they have a lot of money. And you still find them accepting donations. Why do they accept donations? They don't accept donations just anyhow. They accept donations from their members. And that's what we but are saying. But why do they accept these donations? They don't need the because people huge are coming, donations. People are coming to worship God with, the, with, with their, their properties. And that is allowed in the scriptures. That if the Lord Ken, opens your hand okay. and Ken, you come you need to, to understand. Uh, yeah. Let me just help you. Yeah. Okay. Ken, you need to understand that in the world major religions, you're talking about Christianity, you're talking about Islam, Judaism. you're talking about Judaism. Mm -hmm. All these major religions, one of their cardinal pillars is giving. Yes. One of their cardinal pillars. In fact, the scripture says that no one should appear before me empty-handed yeah. in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, it even goes to say how you should bring your offerings weekly in the book of 1 Corinthians from chapter 9 and go on. So giving is a cardinal pillar in the Christian faith. Okay. Okay. You understand me? Okay. Then I need to also point out yes. that the scripture he quoted theologically is not even about bad money. 
It's about the lying, not the bad money, the Ananias and Sapphira story. If you look at it properly, it was not about the money they were giving. It was about the lying. It was not money. We're talking about money here. Okay, about so about if you go to theologies, weird. it's about who they were. You know, if you're we talking, talking about, about theologies, the they were liars. If you're talking about okay. theologies, we're talking about money. And I don't understand why somebody would even interpret the scripture from lying to money. It is the money was okay. It was the it's, lying. It's, it was the heart. We need exegesis here. We need exegesis. This is exegesis. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. Let's listen to him. Yes. Let me. You this see, is exegesis. It's, it's so sad. Yes. It may look very convincing, but it's, it's so, not biblical. It's so sad yes. that that uh, present day we present day preachers we are actually cut off from what is called the present truth. Truth is progressive. If there, it's, it's not that there's no time. If we go into history, to talking about people who built those churches we are we are mentioning. Have you ever heard in your life a preacher coming to tell you that there are certain monies you don't collect? It's in the Bible. Even the terrible Pharisees that we call them under the law. They rejected the offering of, what's the name of this man? Judas. Judas collected, his soul. he betrayed Jesus. They paid him 30 cents. He came and dropped it in the offering. Uh, he, he casted the money back to the Pharisee. They, they said, we cannot collect this blood, this blood money. And they, and they used it to buy a field. Here's the point. Here's what we don't understand. Here's what we don't understand. They are scriptures because I don't know why they are saying we are getting theological. Why? You call Bible. You say Bible and money. Is Bible not theology? No, no, wait, wait. Let me explain. I have not. Can I, can I finish? Okay. Let me finish. Let me say something. Can I finish? Can I finish, please? Yes, please. Can I finish? Just through the money. I'll can I, can I, can I, can I finish? An offering is given to God. Can I finish, please? Can I finish? Yes. It's given to God. Who collect it? Have you ever seen an angel coming to collect money from church? Wait, wait, wait. Let me explain. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Let me explain. Tell me any present day pastor that's Judas will bring that, let's say it is $30 million, that he betrayed Jesus with it, and they gave him $30 million. He, yes, he now brought the money and gave to a bishop in this generation. They will okay. collect it. Can, can I they bishop, will not be bothered. No, no, no. Okay, let me say, they will, you see, we, 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 no, no, listen, listen, listen. An example. Can, I, can, can I finish what I, yes, because please, then they were saying, we're listening to you. Yes. I kept quiet. Let me also finish my own. Because, because there, there are issues they have raised. Oh, no, we have time. Don't worry. We have time. Yes. You get my point. Which Bishop, which preacher, okay, which preacher in our generation will not collect Judas money? Money that, money of blood, blood money. Which preacher will not collect it? So can I but, but, excuse me, sir. Let me finish. finish. Yes. I'm a preacher. I, yes. I am, that is why I say we. we. I'm using we. we. Yes. You, see, you, see, you, see, you see, you see, let me tell you, sir. Let me tell you, sir. I wish we, the church, preachers, used to meet and talk to ourselves. And tell ourselves, stop this, stop this, stop this. You will not call us here. Can, can the Bible says, if you judge yourself, you shall not be judged. The world is judging now today because we refuse to, be, to, to sit down and reason. Okay. Let, me, let me finish. Yeah, he, he, he spoke about um, not appearing before God uh, empty handed. That is Exodus. When God, God told them three times in a year, uh, uh, men shall appear. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not against giving. Do you get my point? If you bring out the principle, nobody shall appear before God empty handed. How about the poor person who cannot pay his rent? He trek well, from home and well. come to church. There well. is no offering. To read give. Your Bible well. So you should not come to church. Let me, let me respond to this. Let me let me finish that, sir. I, 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 I need to get bishops on this. Yes. Yes. Yeah.